All right, this is some blue foam box that I made to cover my CNC shark closure. I used the white Gorilla Glue. It sets up a little faster than the brown stuff does. Um, it, it does pretty good. It makes a good bond. It used some fine thread sheetrock screws to put it together with. And uh, the pink marker, I painted it four times, and it still shows up. So it's even on the finished product. <laughs> and it came out as a good project. All right, I got this CNC machine about oh, a little under, a little over a month ago, and I made oh 20, 30 projects with it. And I've had a ball with it. It was filling my shop up with dust, and uh, the noise was pretty loud. I had, uh, of course, uh, shop vac dust boots on it with the broom and all that stuff, and I watched on web for quite a few different boxes. And this box is made out of the one inch blue foam. And it's basically like an ice chest that just sits over the top of the table. And I basically have just a vent hose that comes out of the hole there. And whenever I need to stick it in, this is just taking all of the light dust that will fill my garage up and takes it out and filters it out and sends it through the dust deputy and then back through the paper filter now if you don't have a dust deputy you're just not just not thinking it through because that device puts all the dust down in that box and none of it comes back in your filters i've also got one on my shop vac and i filled that five gallon can up three or four times in the last couple of weeks from cnc shaving of course i've got the hose on a reel that goes out into the middle of the garage and but i've never had to clean that filter and i've had that in there over a year now Never once had to clean that shop back filter. So um, between the two of them, it's pretty nice. I am reminded of uh, the process when I either clean my other shop back filter. But anyway, all this is is just a real light duty foam box. And when the fan's on, I've got air that's coming in right here. And then it sucks it up, goes over there to that side. Now I, I kept the hose down because most of the dust is going to be at the cutter level. And then to lift this thing up, it's just basically like, you know, this thing only weighs a couple of pounds because it's blue foam. And I did paint it with a latex, acrylic latex paint. And uh, what that does is, let me put you down here for just a second. Put my kickboard in here. And I don't have that perfected as of yet, but it's really not too much of a problem basically i just made a notch board put a notch on it there and i can get fancier with it but i don't like a lot of complicated stuff it it has has a tendency to bite you there's nothing inside this but just a styrofoam box with one hole in it the the lexan that i put on here i just cut all four glasses at the same time drilled all the holes through all of them and then i just sandwiched it over the foam with a little bitty bolts and this is a uh, shark hd510 uh, it'll cut a 25 by 25 piece but anyway when that foam which is you know it's it's just basically three quarters it's one inch foam and there's a picture of it there but that's basically one inch and uh, i use gorilla glue the, the foam kind and what you do is you wet the joint when you glue it up and it bonds and it bonds tight and then I use a drywall screw, fine thread, to hold it. I just leave them in there so they don't weigh, weigh a whole lot. But uh, as you can see, it bonds that that foam pretty nicely. Now I could I could make them perfect with a little uh, patching plaster because that's what the modelers do. But uh, anyway, and then uh, I was too cheap to go buy another piece, so I just bonded two pieces together and put a piece over the top of it. But the table. Is a grizzly uh, shop fox table with the locking wheels and uh, in my small shop everything comes out on wheels and then it parks back up against the the uh, walls but what I did is I got the maple top with the machine and then I added on top of that MDF and I trimmed it with some some old cherry just to protect the top of that maple countertop and then when I decided to put this box on I went ahead and figured my clearances between here and here 
with the, the arm that slides back and forth and give myself about two inches on each side all the way around it. So when it goes all the way to the back, it doesn't touch. When it comes all the way to the front, it doesn't touch. When left and right, it doesn't touch. So this is the clearance on this side. This side's a little bit shallower, not quite. And all your sawdust basically just comes in and it fills, fills that up a little bit back up here. I can CNC for an hour and uh, carbon. Um, and these will be will have dust in it, but I'm getting no dust on the ground now. Um, that's the best thing. And then whenever I get ready to clean it, you know, I basically just drop the foam. Drop the foam down, just pull out this lever. It lifts down. And then I can come around the back side, take the this out of it, lift it up, and, and clean the other side of it real real easy. The whole thing will actually lift up um, straight up. Of course, my garage door is up there, and uh, but I can get it to go straight up and, and pull it out of there if I need to. So when it comes time to greasing the, mach the machine and doing maintenance on it, this all just comes off there just really quick. And, you know, it's a two-handed operation, but um, the whole thing doesn't weigh. This thing here is just a big ice chest it's out, of, out of the blue foam. So it's working really well. It damp dampens the sound enough to where when you're uh, standing here next to it two people can sit out here and... all right so just to clean this thing you basically lift it up you take your vacuums put your posts in there vacuum around it on the trays on the sides and then set her back down come around the back side lift it up and run your vacuum sweeper in there and you got it cleaned up and you know almost no time at all and it just sits back on top of there it's a loose it's you know enough of a loose fit that it just kind of swings in there but this box is made out of uh, the one inch blue foam thrill of glue and uh, it makes a nice uh, nice box one thing about the gorilla glue you use the kind for foam you wet both sides with a wet towel or a wet rag then apply your glue and then the glue makes it activate but it bonds it I mean it's it's yeah, the foam will actually break almost to the point where, I mean, it's some pretty good glue. And then I ran over it, of course, with a little, little orbital sander just to clean up the old glue. But when it foams up, if you look in the corner over there, when it foams up, it'll it'll get a little jaggedy on the inside, but I don't really care about it. And then uh, that's just a little LED light that lights it up. And we cut a big Wahoo board with it here the other yesterday so I had, I had to move the light out to the outside because it was cutting the whole sides of that table and but i just set it up on a box right here and had it shine in so you can see it perfectly good but the sound dampening and the dust collection this is a win-win for it and uh, this is a waste of money here as far as I'm concerned all right I'm going to make a uh, one of these this is just a present that I give to the boys when they came into our FCF. It's got our emblem in it and the boys' names at the, at the bottom and the date. And this is made out of some recycled red oak. And uh, basically what this does is it turns it into a... Once you jig it up, I just put the little quarter-inch red oak deals, put them in there, and then I put a screw in each side one at the end to hold it down. And that's my clamping method. And then when I'm ready to pull that, I just back screws out. But this right here is what I just cut out of there. And uh, of course I just dropped it and, and knocked the, the uh, tabs out of it. But it's already been cut, hadn't been sanded or anything. I am starting to mill all of the edges so that there's a lot smoother. So this cut will be in that direction there. So that's what I'm basically, um, doing I milled up uh, about 10 of these boxes like this and uh, they were a pretty good hit so I'm gonna make a few more for some presentations this week and I've got my zero set up I'm going ahead and bring my I just changed my cutter out I'll bring it down and hit my plate move my plate up here and then touch the plate as there goes of a 
dressing and it's cutting. And that's just a router bit. It's nothing fancy. Without this enclosure here, I wouldn't even be able to hear you and you wouldn't be able to hear me. So it's doing a good job. You can see that the, the chips are being set out. The, the router actually blows the uh, stuff out considerably, so it's not even down in there so you can see what's going on. And I have aggressively cutting. I, first few I did, I had multiple passes going. And, uh, you know, I, I found out that I didn't need to do that. If you cut them too slow, you'll burn your wood. And, uh, so that's the first pocket of the first, first one. Then move over and do the other pocket. And again, it's aggressive. This one, I put some ramps in it. And, uh, it's not quite as aggressive in, in the cut. It doesn't have to go down as deep. But that one's probably, I would say, it's more set up for the right stuff. The router doesn't grind as much. But as you can see, it's quite a mess. As you come in here, back away, you know, it's still not too bad. That's the uh, dust collector is pretty good. You can't hear this out at the street, so with the driveway, so that's really was after but the air look at the air quality there's no dust and before i had dust everywhere with the other uh, vacuum hooked up to it and uh it would just it would throw it all over the floor it was all over everything all, all over all the tools and uh, that was that was uh not good for me so this is working real well just about to finish up on that last cut Going around there for that last pocket. And we'll lift it up and do a bit change. Alright, going back to zero. Alright, that's with the shop back going. I can turn it off a little bit while we're talking. But basically, I'm ready for a, a bit change. I'll hit the stop button on here. Exit. And exit out of that. Exit out of that. And go up. And we'll change the uh, this bit out, put a quarter in round in it. Also, you can pick these up from your tool supplier. They're like the collets are five bucks a piece. Pick you up four or five of them because when them bits get hot and you're trying to pull them out, you'll slice your little fingers up. And uh, these are like only five bucks a piece. So, um, you know, that's a real good tip as far as I'm concerned is to load up four or five of them and have them with all your bits that you're using. I bought the the five bit case and uh i'll probably buy four or five more of these um the quarter inch and uh they're five bucks a piece so it's a good investment all right i've zeroed this in getting ready for the next operation there's all the dust from the previous just the, the cutting of two pockets and as you can see no dust or stuff on the floor so all i'm going to do is uh drop the kickboard here and all i have is just a notch on this and it just sits right back down inside there. A uh, couple little things. That uh, was something I did find. As I went ahead, I had bought another wrench because I'd lost the other wrench to, for tightening the, your collet on your router. And I've been using this, and I found out that this is actually a better tool because the thickness of this tool goes right up against the base of the router, and it fits on the nut perfectly. So... Once you just slide it up in there, you don't have to wonder if you're on the nut or not. And then uh, the other the other wrench. So that speeds up changing your bits. All right, we're gonna load up off of the USB. We're gonna go to this one and double check that it's the quarter inch. Click next and start. And away it goes. I have it drill those holes just in case I need to use it for alignment. Basically, it's on the center line, and this thing's going to go around and cut out the rims of the box. And right now, right now, it's going around here, and it'll cut out all these edges around it. It'll take about oh, 15, 20 minutes to go ahead and do it. It does all the pockets in here, 
and uh, cut the pockets out. And then once that's all done, I'll put a bead bed in and it'll clean up all those edges. So I'm gonna go inside and, and let this do its thing. Right now, it's just over there cutting away. And again, no dust on the floor. Nothing around, it all stays in the tracks, in the box. When I'm done, I'll just take it back and go around it and clean it up. And it only takes a minute or two versus sitting there with a vacuum sweeper, vacuuming, vacuuming, vacuuming. All right, this is in the house, just inside the garage door. So it's not unbearable before, it was pretty noisy. Here's my wife going through her Bible notes. And she has lots of Bible. I just stomped her in Wahoo. This is a this is a Wahoo board that I put on there and created in about 45 minutes on this CNC. Cincy. And we call it Cincy. And then my son came down and we made a six-sided Wahoo board. And uh, so we're putting it to all kinds of good work. All right. Just got through milling up those uh, inner parts. I'm going to clean up those uh, edges with a V-bit now. I've got it zeroed in and we're going to close this down with that little guy and turn the dust collection back on and let it do its thing. Alright, it's going around the edge and doing two passes. Basically just cleaning up that beveled edge going down and making it uh, smoother where I don't have to really get in and sand it. It can do it faster than I can. I was just doing it on the bench on the little sander but it does not much easier job. got through cleaning up a couple making a couple of those things and there's the dust as you can see on the floor here there's really nothing to speak of a little bit right there I'm going to clean that up with just a real quick dust deputy clean up and we'll get back to you this is a four player Wahoo board I put in there and I just downloaded the CRE file these are a group of uh, uh, gifts that I've presented our uh, Roll Rangers with, uh, just a carved and uh, V-carved and then the cups, two bowls, it's kind of nested. Uh, it, was a, it was a pretty good project, probably took me four or five uh, copies to get it to where I really liked it. And uh, these are my learners, so the ones I've got now are a lot better. One of my first signs was cedar, came out real nice. Uh, this is with just some that plastic that you, uh, like boards you can buy from Lowe's. I'm going to try it. This is a V carb on a picture. I've carved several pictures now. And uh, that's one of my dog. Uh, and uh, kind of enjoying doing that. And there's a cedar little sign put over my spare tire on my camper. And I've since then painted it letters uh, silver inside there so that it stand out. And I also made a couple little plaques. This is some walnut from a tree that we cut down. And uh, this is also a sign for. Coming to clerk, so I've been having a lot of fun. These are my first projects.